and eat small and find flavor in everything that you do, I'm ready too. <laughs> Welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. I am Michelle Giesen, your hostess with the Moses. I have so much to show you today. I think I'm a little overwhelmed. I have been preparing for this for quite a few weeks, perfecting my recipes and doing what I need to do in order to show you the good stuff. And I just don't feel like there's enough hours in the day. So there's a lot of ingredients. I have three recipes I've decided to show you. Um, and so we're gonna really do a quick little introduction and then we're gonna cut to the chase, okay? If you're, well, if you're new to our format, welcome. And if you're not new to our format, welcome also. <laughs> One thing we have in common is that we have all had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. And if you don't fit the bill for that, thanks Melissa, um, maybe you're just trying to strive for overall health and wellness, or maybe you're trying to combat diabetes. It doesn't matter if you're watching today, you're in the right spot, okay? Because food is a huge part of our lives, whether we like it or not. We have to figure out ways to coexist with it and not let it rule our lives, okay? So life shouldn't be spent wandering the face of this earth, thinking, can I have this, can I have that, and feeling deprived. That feeling is what can spiral you out of control and make you lose your mind. Trust me, I've been there, okay? So here's the deal. Remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because there's no reason you should ever have to feel that way, okay? Life before or after bariatric surgery is supposed to be a fun time. It is a rebirth day. We can have fun with food, we can live, we can experiment, we can have fun in the kitchen, we can have a ball at the grocery store, okay? Being in the kitchen and being at the grocery store should be a complete an adventure, okay? It should be a total adventure like a fun little roller coaster ride or something at the amusement park. You are on this journey and you want to make the most of it, okay? Embrace it. It's very empowering to be able to make a dish or make over a dish that you've loved for years, that your family loves, or something entirely new. Super fun to be able to nourish your body without feeling those feelings of deprivation, okay? It is so important to me as a bariatric patient to be able to keep control and decide what I want to put in my mouth. And I have worked hard. I've lost 130 pounds. I had gastric bypass surgery in April of 2015. And I celebrate that day as my rebirth day, okay? It's a really hard journey. It's good, it's bad, it's ugly, it's amazing. I have no regrets. But what I do have is insight, okay? I know I make my share of mistakes. I know now that the difference between then and now is that I can isolate bad behaviors, I can spot and correct them, I can remake foods to fit my healthy lifestyle, and I don't have to feel deprived. And that is my pledge to you. I am here to help myself, but I'm also here to help you and empower you and help you realize that you can have whatever you want, okay? Um, I like to cook small because I don't like to waste and because, you know, my stomach is the size of a small egg. <laughs> but it's all worth the time and the effort because I know I'm worth the time and the effort and I know that you are too, okay? So we've got a lot that we wanna talk about. Um, several weeks back, I was asking people on my Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page what you wanted to see, what we could remake, what we could do in preparation for the holiday season. And I had several ladies ask me about different types of Thanksgiving-y, Christmas-y type harvesty foods, um, apples and cinnamon, pumpkin spice, those kinds of things. So today we're dedicating our Facebook Live recipe demonstration to apples and cinnamon. And there are lots of apples and cinnamon. Um, I have three recipes to show you. I'm gonna kind. I'm going to um, not worry about our Sunday spotlight today because me and my publicist Melissa are working on reformatting this 
Um, and so next week I am going to launch our replacement spotlight. It's going to be something that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. Um, so please stay tuned for that. For those of you that have asked me about the Sunday spotlight, um, thank you for your interest and I appreciate it. We're not quite to where we need to be with that format. So we're tweaking a few things and I will be in touch. Okay. So hang tight. We've got this. So let's just jump into our apples and cinnamon segment. I've got three things that I'm going to show you. I am going to show you a baked apple that you can make for you and your sweetie or just you. <laughs> I can, I'm going to show you um, apple cobbler that is made with no white flour that is going to knock your socks off. And then I am going to make homemade apples and cinnamon applesauce, which is a tribute to my grandma and a way to um, add protein to applesauce, which is going to be great. So thank you, Grandma. Um, my grandmother made the best homemade applesauce, and it was best served warm. This is served best warm or cold. It's just amazing and delicious, so I can't wait to show it to you. We're going to start off with the easy stuff. I'm going to do the baked apple. Super, super easy. I think what I'm gonna do is take you on a field trip like I have been and bring the camera over to the side so that way you can see exactly what I'm doing. Does that sound good? All right, I'm coming to get you. Here we go. All right, here I am. We are going on an adventure. Now it just totally made me, I just tripped over my daughter's flute because it is on the floor, which is not really where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I'm bringing you over here. All right, got this. Hold on one second. Bear with me. I'm doing one more thing. All right, I'm a coming. All right, so you got a really good look at my kitchen sink. I know you love that. Remember, I'm not a camera person. I am a cook. <laughs> Hi, Heather, thank you for watching. Hi, Amanda, thank you for watching. All right, so I'm going to start off with a baked apple. And in the spirit of really good yumminess, I am going to show you the finished product first because I think that will make you really excited. Here is our baked apple, okay? So what we're going to do, and I am going to reach over and I'm going to get my recipes that I, I always create my recipe. I put them in page protectors and then I put it in my spiral binder, all right? So my baked apple is super easy. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take whatever apple you like, anything is fine, and we are gonna core it. Um, hopefully you have a core or something like that. However you wanna core the apple, that is fine. I am gonna core it just like this. If you have any questions about any of the gadgets that you see, Make sure you let me know because I love my kitchen gadgets. So there's, there's the apple and look, it's gonna, oh, and there's the core. All right, so that goes in the sink. So now I've got my cored apple and I'm just gonna slice the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to lay on top, just like that, okay? I want it to be a flat surface. So now you've got the core, which we are gonna plug with our yummy cinnamon mixture, okay? I am gonna get a plate, so bear with me, because I make noise, and I will put that on my plate because that's what's gonna go in the microwave, okay? So now what we're gonna do for our, let's talk for a second, hold on. Hello again. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Brand new here. Well, Heather, welcome. Heather's brand new here, so can't wait to show you these recipes. So I want to talk a little bit about the mixture. Um, I have a really good go-to mixture that I use when I'm trying to make crumbly stuff in place of white flour. Um, and so some of these ingredients that you're gonna that you're gonna see, um, maybe you don't have them in the kitchen. I recommend having them in the kitchen. Number one, they have a really long shelf life, and number two, you're never gonna know when you need them. Um, and I'm gonna use them in two of our recipes today. So with the baked apple, all you're gonna do is you're gonna add um, all the dry ingredients together. So I'm gonna show you, and I'll bring, I'll bring the camera back down so we can do this together, and you can see what we do. And then we're gonna take it a step further when we do our apple cobbler, which is amazing. All right. 
So here we go. We're going yonder. I'm so glad that we've got some newbies here. Hi, Mandy. All right. So for our dry ingredients, we are going to use a mixture of almond, coconut, co almond and coconut flours, flaxseed, and hemp hearts. This is what I call my Fab Four combination, okay? This is a really great low-carb pseudo-flour concoction. I also like to take it a step further, and I like, <laughs> hello again, I like to um, add hazelnut flour into it as well because my belief is that you can have a really nice rounded flavor concoction if you use many different ingredients, okay? So I'm gonna use a half of a tablespoon of each. This is coconut flour. This is hemp hearts. I got this bag at Costco, so very easy to find. You can get them on Amazon as well. Then I'm gonna use almond flour. Again, this one I got at Sam's Club. I'm pretty sure you can get it locally wherever you want. And then flax, milk flax seed. Again, super easy to find. There was a time where these ingredients were not easy to find and they were not cheap either. And now it's just so much more readily available because people are becoming um, you know, more natural this is hazelnut flour, and this I actually bought on Amazon, um, and it's so delicious, all right? So I've got five one-half tablespoons in here right now. I am also gonna add my Splenda sugar and my Splenda brown sugar. I am a huge fan of Splenda sugar, and both of these I got locally at Meijer. You can get it in the baking section. I'm gonna do a half a tablespoon of each, and a half a tablespoon of that, okay? And then, this is where it gets good. I'm gonna add two scoops of Gene Pro protein powder. This is a godsend to a bariatric patient or to someone who just wants to get more protein in. Um, and the scoops are really small, and it's only, each scoop is only 56 calories, so this is a great no-brainer to add to anything, from smoothies to, um, <laughs> to this, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put two scoops in here, and that's just gonna help fortify this with protein and give us a little bit more bang for our buck. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of cinnamon to start. I'm a huge cinnamon fan, um, but there is such thing as too much, so, I'm gonna start off slow, and I am going to, now that I've got all these done, I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna whisk them together. I'm gonna reach over and get my whisk, and make sure that they're all mixed up nice, and it is, and it's just gonna look like a flour mixture, which is great, and you just wanna make sure you get it as mixed up as you can. I see a little bit of brown sugar in there um, that was giving me a little bit of grief, so I'm gonna mosey over to the fridge and get out my Greek yogurt. Now, think about when you are making some sort of cobbler or crumble type thing. Butter is always used as the ingredient to um, help make it, give it that crumble and, and pack everything and keep it together. We are not gonna use butter here. We are gonna use Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is an amazing substitute for butter when you're cooking. So. I like to spray my, my spoon or my tablespoon first, um, and then I'm going to scoop up my Greek yogurt and throw it on in there. And that way most of it comes off the tablespoon, okay? So I'll do that. And now what we wanna do is we just wanna whisk it until it gets to that crumbly concoction. Um, and it does take a couple seconds. So we're gonna do that and see how it's, I'm a lefty, so this, the camera is not very well placed for a lefty here. I'm trying to be ambidextrous here. <laughs> All right, so take a look. See how it's getting nice and crumbly? This is awesome. It's exactly what we wanna see. 
And I'm gonna cheat a little and just give it a little taste. And it is absolutely delicious, but I'm gonna add a little bit more cinnamon because that is how I roll. So at the end of the day, I put a full teaspoon in here. And again, this will be your recipe soon enough. I will start posting about three o'clock. If I'm a little bit late in posting my recipe, please forgive me, it will be tonight. Um, I do have them scheduled, but after our broadcast, I have got to go pick up my daughter. She went to the movies with a boy. <laughs> so I'm having little palpitations as we speak. All right. So at any rate, we are done here. So now this is gonna make a mess, of course. There we go. I'm gonna have to just rinse my hands real quick, so bear with me. Now I've got enough of this mixture for two apples. So again, you can make this for your sweetie if you want, or you can just save it for a rainy day, okay? And all I'm gonna do is start spooning the mixture into the hollow space we created by coring the apple. This is kind of a, um, a take on an old Weight Watchers recipe that I had growing up with my mom. Um, she always made baked apples, and this was before like microwaves and stuff, but there, you can see how it's all stuck down there. You really wanna pack it in, and it's gonna be a little bit like a volcano at the end of when it's all said and done, because it's gonna start oozing out of the top. All right, so we've got that mixed. And now, let me just get my hands cleaned up and bring you back over to me so you can see me. Hello. All right, so now do you use a certain kind of cooking spray? I, Heather, I just have Pam, and the only reason I use Pam is because that's what they have. They have it in a two-pack at Sam's Club, so it's super cheap, and I buy a lot of it because I use it for everything. So hopefully that answers your question. Keep the questions coming if you have them. All right, so I have got this going. We are going to throw it in the microwave. Oh, Melissa, thank you. We're gonna throw it in the microwave for three minutes. Now I want you to pretend, I want to pretend that, well, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. Let's just do it. I'm taking off my bariatric sign. I was gonna just pretend to do it, but let's just do it. Three minutes on the clock, okay? But what I do want to tell you while that three minutes is going, because I don't want to waste precious time, is that this is the result of it. So you can choose to eat the skin, or you can not eat the skin, but either way, it is delicious. Now, each baked apple is just 115 calories. Most of that is from the apple itself. You've got 2.4 grams of fat. You've got 16 carbs. Again, if you're counting carbs, don't let this give you a heart attack because it gave me a heart attack at the beginning because like I'm the carb police. I try so hard to keep my carbs at bay. But these are natural carbs. This is, the fr this is just the fruit talking, okay? Um, so 16.5 grams of the fruit, carb, and then 16.7 grams of protein. So it is a substantial snack. And this is a snack that can go with you to work because you can assemble that apple the way I just did that in the microwave and put it in a little Tupperware cup and bring it to work and then nuke it when you're ready. And it's just a great, great snack idea. I always like to keep my snacks between 100 and 150 calories. So this is ideal. So again, there's our baked apple. If I end up taking a bite of it on camera, you're probably gonna see me have a little tiny heart attack because it is so good. It is delicious. It's like perfectly spiced and it feels crumbly and it feels like I'm eating the cobbler of the apple cobbler we're about to make, mostly in part because that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna switch gears I know it's still in the microwave. Once the make microwave comes out, I will show you how it comes out right out of the oven. But let's keep going, okay? Because there's a lot to show you. Um, 
Yes, yum doesn't even begin to describe it, Liz. Liz, did you ever eat these baked apples when we were growing up? My mom made them all the time. Did you ever, ever do that? But at any rate, so now we're gonna switch over to our apple cobbler mode. This is really quite a bit the same, just on a larger scale, and there's a lot that I wanna show you. So it's 2.20 already. We are definitely gonna be running over today. Um, yeah, I think so too, Liz, but um, we're gonna definitely run over today, and I apologize. I'm gonna try and show you this stuff as, as quickly as I can, but I'm really, really excited about the apple cobbler. So what we're gonna start off with is you need an eight by eight baker, um, and you wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and I'm gonna bring the camera. Oh, hold on, let me just go get the, the baked apple, and that way we can put that to rest. Ooh. It probably could use a little bit more time, but look. Ooh, ah, and see, it, it's like molten apple that comes out of the top, and then you've got all this nice crumble, and then you can um, cut it with your knife, like I did on the one that I showed you. And there you are, and now the dog's coming running. All right, so there, there's our baked apple. Onward and upward, you guys. So let's go back down to my plate, or my, can never get this right. Okay, you can see that pretty well, plus all the ingredients, okay? So apple cobbler, you're first gonna need um, four cups of apples that are sliced. And I wanted to um, show, so I've got, I've had these apples sliced, they are um, spiked with a little bit of lemon juice just to keep them looking from looking brown. So once you have your apples that are sliced, you're gonna put them into a baker um, and you wanna make sure that you spray the pan. There we go, all right. So there, apples, some of them have turned a little bit brown but I'm not too worried about it and that lemony taste won't really affect them when they are being cooked. So spread them out a little, spread the joy, make them look yummy. And this is where we have to really get our, <coughs> pardon me. This is what happens when I talk too much. I get a dry part in my mouth. Hold on one second, you guys. Holy moly. Yes, my, if my husband weren't in here, he'd be like, yep, it's because you're talking too much. All right, so a lot of ingredients in this, but again, if you keep these things as part of your arsenal at home, you'll always have them on standby, and it's just a great way to recreate a meal, okay? So we're gonna start off with all of the, um, the Gene Pro. The Gene Pro you need to make into a little bit of a slurry, um, and so I always like to do that first. So two scoops of Gene Pro, I'm gonna put it into this little souffle cup that I have ready. Actually, I would rather put it into this really large measuring cup because there's more surface area. So let's do that. Now what I like to do for the Gene Pro to make the slurry, and you're gonna be looking at my sink here in a minute, and I apologize if you can see the inside of the sink because I need to clean it. But all you wanna do when you're making the Gene Pro slurry, you want to put in as, as little water as you can, and you just want to swish it around. It's almost like when you're doing the same thing with cornstarch in a meal, okay? So you can see, I used very little water, and I'm swishing this around, and I'm gonna actually let it be, and let it sit for a second while we do the rest of our preparation, okay? So now what we wanna do is we put the apples into the baking dish with the cooking spray, and now we need to add three tablespoons of Splenda and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon in a bowl, okay? So I've got my Splenda. Funny story, I, um, I was at, where did my tablespoon go? Here it is. I was at Meyer last week or the week before, and they had all the Splenda clearanced out at 50%, like four or five of them, so I bought them all. So anyways, we are going to do our 
three tablespoons. One, two, three, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon right there. Okay, and then we're just gonna mix it around. And so I'll whisk it. And all we're gonna do here is pour that concoction over our apples. So I'm just sprinkling it on, you can see it, hopefully, and get every single little crevice and place and everything, because we want all that yummy goodness to bake on through when we throw it in the oven, okay? So I've got that done, that's our next step. Then what we have to do is we have to combine our, what I call our flour mixture, see I'm using quotations, okay? So what we want is, we want two tablespoons of each of our dry mixes. Okay, so let's start with that. We're gonna start with coconut flour. Can you see my, let me move this a little so you can see the bowl. One, two, and put it aside. This is hazelnut flour. One, two, and put it aside. Flaxseed, milled flaxseed. One, two, and put it aside. Hemp hearts, the same thing. One, two, put it aside. And then finally, the almond flour. One, two, and putting that aside. Okay, we've got all of those, but now we need to um, add, we need to add our sugar, which I like to do a table, a half, a, a half to a tablespoon of each. White sugar, Splenda and brown sugar Splenda. And again, I know there's a lot of ingredients here, but the whole idea beyond, behind not feeling deprived and feeling satisfied is to have our taste buds singing. And all these different flavors are gonna mix together and sing you a good song, okay? <laughs> so we've got the sugar. Um, now we need to add baking powder. Two teaspoons of baking powder. That'll give it some fluff. One, two, taspo two teaspoons of baking powder. And then I didn't do the cinnamon yet, so I'm gonna put in that, which is one teaspoon total. This is a half teaspoon, so I'm just gonna add. My philosophy is really, if you're conscious about it, you never need, um, you never ha need, have um, too much cinnamon, okay? I'm wandering over to get an egg out of the refrigerator. We just need one. One egg is going to be, help us keep everything together here. So again, to recap, we've put all this stuff in and now, um, oh, we need to add our slurry. So here's our Gene Pro. And again, sometimes if you want, you can get that whisk in there. All these ingredients are being combined, so that's why I haven't washed it out. But I'm gonna scoop my Gene Pro in there. So now I've fortified this mixture with protein, and I'm gonna fortify it with more protein in just a minute, too. You're gonna love this. The egg is going in, all right? And so now when we whisk it together, we're gonna get like a dry, like a mixture that kind of resembled what we put into our baked apple, but it's gonna be a little bit more wet. But that's okay, because now I've got a secret weapon coming in. Remember, we want this to look like a crumble because we need to put this on top of our apple mixture. And so now you can see that it looks like it's kind of wet, like pasty, and it sticks. We want it to get to a crumble mixture. So rather than use flour, we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna use my new best friend and hopefully yours, Naked Casein Protein Powder. This stuff is amazing because it emulates flour in its texture. It actually looks like a cross between flour and cornstarch and we are gonna put two scoops. Two scoops is 110 calories, no fat, no carbohydrates, and 26 grams of protein. So. If you're asking, even though the portions of this might be small, it's gonna be super protein fortified and it is gonna leave you feeling very satisfied and far from any feelings of being deprived of anything. So one scoop 
and two scoops, all right? And now I've got this mixture and now I can whisk it to where it emulates flour and we're gonna get that crumble effect. It's so, it's such a great, great find. I, I, I am so glad that when I was doing research about the things that I wanted to cook and stuff that I found this casein and protein powder. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've heard people pronounce it casein or casein. I don't know, potato, potato. It has no carbs, so I'm happy. <laughs> All right, see now look, I have completely reinvented that sticky mixture into a crumble type that we can be very proud of. All right, so now all we're gonna do, and look, it's, it crumbles. That's the way the not so cookie crumbles. And all we're gonna do is gently bring all this yumminess into the pan or the, the baker and spread it all around, spread the joy. You want it evenly placed, okay? I have made such a mess in this kitchen today, but it has been so much fun. Okay, so now it's gonna go into the oven 350 degrees for about 45 to 55 minutes. You just wanna make sure that you check it, okay? I'm gonna put it in the oven and then we will see the magic. All right, here I go coming. Oh, look what I found. I found one that's already done. All right, here we go. We've got baked apple cobbler. I'm gonna put this one in the oven too and I will be eating for days. All right, so you can see the apple cobbler. I probably left it in a tad bit longer than I should have, but that's because I was running my mouth. Let me bring you closer. Here comes the dog. My poor dog, you guys. I might have to show you. Lego, say hi to everyone. He's wearing the cone of shame. Poor Lego but it hasn't affected his taste buds. So he will be having apple cobbler with me here shortly. <laughs> All right. All right, so we've got ourselves some apple cobbler. Let me get another plate or bowl and show you. No, you can be pretty even Steven about this. It's supposed to make six servings. So if you cut it this, if you cut it in half and then you cut each half in thirds, you're probably spot on. And look at that. Now, the only thing that can top this in my eyes would be some whipped cream on top, which I have in the refrigerator, okay? So hold on, let me bring you back up here. Hello again. And get a fork. It smells so good in this house. Yes, it's amazing. Okay, check, check it out. I've got the crumble, I've got the apples. It's hotter than holy you know what. You guys, this is legit. This is so delicious that I can't even believe it. And the crumble is so good. I think it's been cooking for a little bit more than 45 minutes. So really pay attention when you're cooking it. It does a look, it looks a little bit darker than what I planned, but it tastes exactly the way I envisioned it. Well, I didn't need it before, so. <laughs> All right. So that is our apple cobbler. I know that it is 2.34 right now and running over, but the last thing that I wanted to show you is my homemade applesauce. It is a game changer. Michelle, how long does it last in the refrigerator? The last batch that I made, was maybe two weeks, um, but honestly, you're probably not going to, you're probably gonna love it so much that that's not even a factor. <laughs> and if you're thinking freeze it, yes, absolutely freeze it. Sugar-free ice cream would be great on that. Um, the whipped cream would be great on that. Little sprinkle of cinnamon more if you want, that would be great on it. But the last thing I wanted to talk about was my apples and cinnamon. It's gonna be super quick, I promise. I am gonna use my friend Jean Pro and my friend Cinnamon, and I am gonna wander on over to here. I've got it just about done. All I did was boil apples. I boiled, 
I think 16 apples because I like to make this on a grand scale. I put them in um, little souffle cups and I take them to work each day. And of course, I'm looking for one to show you in the refrigerator. And oh, I have one left from the last batch, which is fantastic. All right. So in the effort to wrap up, I'm going to show you the finished product. This is my applesauce. I have cinnamon in it, I have Splenda, and I have protein powder. All I'm gonna do is put in the cinnamon that I want to put in, as much as I want, and I think since we're dealing with a big, huge bat, I'm gonna start off with a tablespoon and see where that takes me. I've got my apples. I made these apples with the skins on. I cored them and boiled them, and just like a potato, when you run them under cold water, the skins separate and you can take them off easily. I'm also gonna throw some Gene Pro in there. I start off with two scoops. I think that's plenty because we're just dealing with a snack. And then I take my immersion blender and I just go to town. One thing I wanna tell you, um, Mary, tell me what you're talking about Greek yogurt. I, I didn't hear the re what you were. Oh, Greek yogurt on top of your apple cobbler? Heck to the yes, that is a great idea. All right, let me pulverize this for you guys and then I can show you. The immersion blender is such a great tool. Blend it to your desired consistency if you like to have um, lumps in it or whatnot. But there's my applesauce, and here is a good view of it. These are four ounce souffle cups with lids that I bought on Amazon, and now I can just take it to work with me. It has a ton of protein in it. It has 10 grams of protein per serving, and if you fortify it more with your favorite protein powder, like the Gene Pro, then you can pound out those that you know the way you need to to determine your nutrition facts. So, all right, my kitchen is a freaking wreck. <laughs> so guess what I'm going to be doing? I have 20 minutes before I need to pick up my daughter from her date. I want to thank you so much for hanging in there with me today. It's been so much fun showing you apples and cinnamon. There's so much that you can do. Um, don't forget that Bariatrics and Tips is on all social media. So you've got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and, and Snapchat. I think that covers it. Um, next week, I don't know what we're doing because I don't have my piece of paper with me yet. But if you want to walk over with me to my kitchen or to my refrigerator, it looks like, ooh, oh my gosh, it's a good one. <laughs> Next week is Halloween and I'm doing jalapeno cheese fritters and I am so excited. Hey Veronica, thank you. I'm so glad you made it. Yay! So next week, jalapeno fritters, cheese fritters, jalapeno and cheese. And then anything that has the word fritter in it is good by me too. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. I so appreciate it. Um, Thanks for bearing with me while I do the camera work and while I do the cooking, but everything turned out yummy. And now I'm going to clean, eat, and go pick up my daughter from her date. So <laughs> thanks again. Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. Live large, cook and eat small, find flavor in all you do. Enjoy your journey. There's so much to see, okay? You take care. Bye-bye.